We just learned the options market looks like it's pretty steady and supportive of stocks. And once again, a little dip this morning was bought and we are at records. Close to them, at least, S&P and the NASDAQ. Let's go to the NASDAQ. Uh, we're Madeline Radner, standing by director of the Market Intelligence Desk. Madeline, thanks for being here this afternoon. We're at records. Things seem to be pretty good here. Is that the vibe as well at the NASDAQ? Yes, thanks, Oliver, for having me on. We actually saw three SPAC IPOs list on NASDAQ this morning for a total raise of $410 million in proceeds. So it seems like the appetite for SPAC IPOs might be coming back a little bit, especially as the backlog from 2021 is improving a little bit. In 2021, there were over 600 SPAC IPOs across the U.S. exchanges. So now that that's been improving, now that those companies have either found targets or liquidated, there's an appetite for SPACs again. But more broadly speaking, there's an appetite for IPOs again. The IPO market has definitely opened up. The window has definitely opened up a bit this, this month and this quarter. We are on pace for the best quarter since 2021. We've seen 92 total IPOs across U.S. exchanges that have raised $18 billion in proceeds. So wow. the pipeline is looking good for IPOs. Yeah, wow. Uh, SPACs, too, not just the IPOs. So I, I guess that means we're, we're getting a little bit heady again. The SPAC attack returns. Um, why? Uh, what, what's kind of the decision-making process when you see those companies choose to go that route versus IPOs? Yeah, you know, as the runway for rate cut expectations becomes a little bit more stable and the upcoming election gets closer, companies are ready to go move forward with their plans, whether that is SPAC or IPO, traditional IPO. So when we look at the pipeline, there are over 180 companies on file to list in the U.S. When we look at the sector breakdown, there's a pretty broad range of sectors that are looking to go public. One thing that I am noticing is that a lot of companies that are actually domiciled outside of the U.S. are interested in coming here and listing on a U.S. exchange. About 40% of proceeds so far, raised so far in the U.S. are actually from non-U.S. issuers. And I think that's happening for a few reasons. The first is that these non-U.S. issuers can really tap into a pretty sophisticated investor base here and a liquid pool of capital. The second is that for companies who choose specifically to list on NASDAQ, they get access to a really robust suite of investor relations services, visibility and advertising opportunities, especially being right here in Times Square. They also get access to many NASDAQ specific indices, such as the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ Biotechnology Index. So whether that's a SPAC IPO or a traditional IPO, there's a lot of opportunity for them. Mm. The uh, uh, pipeline kind of uh, being consumer focused and not being like pure, pure tech. It seems like kind of the uh, real AI centric tech forward names kind of paved the ground earlier this year, like with the arm and stuff and some of the AI attached names. Now it seems to be broadening out a little bit. Yeah, I think that AI growth theme and our, op our opportunity will definitely continue to be very attractive. But they definitely set the ground for other sectors to come to market. We're seeing a lot of consumer companies in the pipeline, technology, as well as biopharma companies come back that there was a little bit of a muted period of time where we didn't see too many biotechs come to market. But I think that's a sign of a healthy IPO market with a broad range of consumers, a broad range of sectors ready to ready to go. All right. Uh, sounds like things are warming up again. SPACs are back. A little hiatus. IPOs in the pipeline. Thanks, Madeline, uh, for the update. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Madeline Radner, Director of the Market Intelligence Desk at NASDAQ.